Uh, like I say, man, this is one of my favorite uh, months because we get to hear um, firsthand, not just what should we be doing, but what are we doing? How are we taking what God's stirring in us and stepping out in faith? And then what he does, I, I, you know, I, I just love, love those stories, like going to Nicaragua and you go to the remote part, it's kind of like throw a dart kind of a thing, and three members of your distant family are there. That is just so God. Or, or you got 102 temperature, you have 102 temperature, the one time you need a normal temperature, that five minutes you got a normal temperature, <laughs> Right? But the thing is, you don't, we don't get to experience that if you don't step out, yeah. right? You, you, you don't get to hear those stories if you don't step out. And, and so that, that's really this, the encouragement of this time is, that, is it simply that we step out. And I just want to look really quickly at a scripture together. It comes out of Colossians chapter uh, 4. You can look this up or it'll come up on the screen. Either way, it's fine. Colossians chapter 4. What's happening here is uh, Paul was in prison. He uh, actually started... He was arrested in Jerusalem. He was falsely accused of bringing Gentiles into the, into the temple. Uh, it would be like trying to take a non-Muslim into the Dome of the Rock or something like that. I mean, it is a no-no. So he's falsely accused of that. Um, they kind of try to hijack him, and he claims his rights to go to Rome and to be tried before Caesar. And so he finds himself in Rome, but he's still doing ministry there. And part of it is he's writing to some of the churches that he's encouraged along the way. And the church in, in a city named Coloss, uh, which is why we call this the Colossians, is, is uh, he writes this letter to them. And uh, it, right before this passage is a section where he's kind of encouraged them to live the way that Jesus would have them live and the way they interact with another. He writes to wives, to husbands, to kids, to fathers, to slaves, to masters, just how they're supposed to interact with one another. And then starting in... Uh, well, the next section of the letter, we call it chapter 4, verse 2. He says this. He says, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. So now he's, he's kind of shifting to a general. I'm, I mean, he's going to conclude this letter. And he says, all right, guys, let's, let's, let's bring it all together. First of all, pray. Second of all, be thankful. Connect with God, depend on him, and understand that he loves and has blessed you. And then in verse 3 says, and pray for us too. While you're in your prayers, make sure to pray for us, specifically that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ, meaning the mystery of the Messiah. The mystery being, first of all, that, that he had to take care of sin before he established the Jewish kingdom. And second of all, the mystery is not only was he man, but he was God. So he says, pray for us that we may proclaim this mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should. And so the very first thing is, hey, you guys know, Paul says, that I, I'm, I'm one who goes. I'm a, what, we, what we call an evangelist. An evangelist is just someone who goes around telling the good news. He's an evangelist. He's gone from city to city to city to city telling and preaching the good news. He's, he's arrested right now, but he's still writing letters, and there's still people coming in, and he's sharing, the, he, the guards who are guarding him, he's sharing the good news. And he's saying, please pray that even now that I communicate it clearly and that people who hear it, hear it. That's what's on his heart. But then there's a shift, verse 5. He goes from himself to those he's writing with, Christians like you and I. He says, be wise in the way you act toward outsiders, right? So as he's saying, pray for me as I interact with outsiders, he's saying you, too, need to be wise in the way you uh, participate in outsiders. That idea of outsiders originated with the Jews, right? The Jews were, we're God's people. Everybody else is the outsider, okay? And it kind of carried over into those who are followers of Jesus. Followers of Jesus are those who are on, in the way, the way, Jesus' way, they're like the, the, the kind of in, but they exist to uh, um, talk to and share with outsiders. It's not an exclusive club. It's an invitational kind of club, but they're referring to the outsiders. Be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. And then it says, make the most of every opportunity. The interesting thing is the phrase make the most actually is the word redeem. In other words, there's an the idea of redeem the time. In other words, Every interaction that you have with outsiders, those outside church, those outside the faith, those outside maybe of your family, 
is an opportunity for you to be an example for Jesus Christ, for you to be a light in the darkness. It's, there is no casual conversation. There is no, I just go about my daily work. We are supposed to take every opportunity. Now, this doesn't mean we go around and every other phrase is praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, or Jesus this, Jesus that, right, where people just kind of get sick of it, okay? As a matter of fact, this, this, he'll go on to say this. He says, let your conversation, so now he's going to tell us what this means. Let your conversation be always full of grace. That doesn't mean you use the word grace. It means it should be full of grace. In other words, full of forgiveness. We all know these people. We love these people. These are what I would say, these are folks who talk like a good grandma, right? If you've ever had a good grandma or grandpa, you can do no wrong. <laughs> and if you do do wrong, they send you back to your parents, all right? <laughs> Good grandma and grandpa, their words are always full of, they're always full of grace. So if you get in trouble and grandma's like, how, how did you think of that? You're so smart. <laughs> I would have never thought of, you know, putting that in someone, so-and-so, and we, whatever, right? Their words are full of grace. They're encouraging. And then it says, um, may it be seasoned with salt. That means useful for something. Don't waste words. It means, it means useful. Speak blessing into people's lives. Right? Why? So that you may know how to answer everyone. In other words, when questions come up, when folks go like, what's going on in your life? Because I see a difference in your life. Not perfection. Not you got it morally all together. Not even that everything in your life is working. But what I see is no matter what is going on in your life, how poor you are, how, how well off you are, how, how um, circumstances are in your favor or circumstances are against you, what I see is a person of grace. What I see is a person of, of joy. What I see is a person of hope. So then people go, hey, what's going on? And you are ready to give an answer because what Paul is saying is, listen, pray for me because this is my life. I go, 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 go. But don't forget that wherever you are, you've, you are also a goer. You also carry the message. Maybe you don't speak like I do. Maybe you, maybe you don't have everything worked out like I do. But don't forget that you have a piece in the puzzle, if you would. That's what we were talking about. Be the missing piece. I want to give you us an illustration here of what I'm talking about. My mom did this for my dad. This is cruel. And not cruel like in mean, but cruel as in the needlework cruel. Um, which is a series of different kinds, usually different kinds of knots and whatnot, of making pictures. This is the backside, so <clears throat> it looks a little better than this. Um, but the reason I want, I, the reason I'm starting with this side is because um, this, is, this is usually the view we get, you guys. Yep. You can kind of see the picture that this is, but it's not crystal clear. And, and, but, but this is, and, and, the, and the other thing is, this is really messy, right? And sometimes God's, God says, you know, I just, I just need a little knot here, right? And you're like, a knot? Does that make any sense? A knot? You know, just, just say hello to someone or, or encourage someone. It just, it just seems it's like it's a tiny thing. And the interesting thing is, is that this, if you really, if you look at this in, in the view of, of, of what we call time, the, what makes this even harder is that we're just working, let's say, in this little section right here, right? And so you don't, you don't a lot of times we don't even get to see the huge, huge picture. All we see is a mess. Even when we're following God, we see a mess. Right. And, and, and sometimes, like I say, sometimes there's there's leftover stuff that maybe you didn't really need, but ends up there. And that those are some of the bad decisions in our life and and addictions in our life and just stupid things that we should never have done. Um, but they're still integral in, in, in how this all comes together. God still uses it. And when we go and when we share and when we're light that I think God is just calling us to be faithful with the little. And don't worry if it's messy. Don't worry if you go, uh, well, um, 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 don't worry. Don't worry if you don't, if you don't do it right. Right? Because here's the thing. If God calls you to do it and you're not ready to do it and you stumble, he ain't taken by surprise. He, however messily you do it, he knew you were going to do it that way. 
And somehow that works in his plan. See, what God does is he uses all that frailty, all that self-doubt, all that, I don't know how to do this, and he weaves it together. Amen. He weaves it together into something amazing. Yeah. Now, the other thing I want to point out is this is all about all this stuff here, all these little strings of our lives aren't about your life and my life. They're about the Lion of Judah. Amen. They're about Jesus. That's the other thing you got to understand. His job, he, he is not trying to weave your life together into a beautiful portrait. He wants to make your life beautiful by adding to something bigger than your life. And that's a beautiful portrait of his kingdom. So I understand some of you are here today and you're already, forget sharing with somebody else. You're like, man, my life is a mess. How can God? How can God? This is all I see. And I would say to you, from the stories you hear, let me tell you, none of them understood that what God was going to do, right? None of them understood this beauty that God was going to do. They just took the messiness as it was and handed it over to God, and he did something amazing with it. Amen? Amen? Amen. All right. So, <clears throat> once again, I, I want you get a picture of what it looks like to go, but not really go that far. And so I'll, uh, I want to hear from a couple more people. First of all, Dan McClure, if you'll come on up. Dan, I think most of you all know Dan. He's uh, on, on, the, on the team here. Um, so you're, you're leading a kind of a different kind of if you would, short-term mission, but it uh, doesn't require airfare. <laughs> so why don't you explain uh, a little bit about what it is that you're doing? Yeah, and I apologize. Last service, I didn't actually let you interview me. I just totally microphone hogged it, so I apologize. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> uh, in, in December, um, I approached you and said, hey, you care if uh, I just invite some folks and we go downtown Sunnyvale just to go love on people and see what happens. Right. So that's what we did. I, um, I invited some folks um, to just join me on a Saturday morning and uh, with a specific purpose to head to downtown Sunnyvale uh, at the farmer's market because that's where a couple thousand pe people show up each week. And we were just gonna go see what the Lord might have for us. And I'm just curious, when you asked these folks, what was it, what was it that you invited them to? Like, hey, come share with total strangers or? Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it was, I said, let's go do street ministry, right? And so we, 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 we called it Sunnyvale Street Ministry and uh, with, with the purpose of just really seeing, like, without an agenda, right? right? So it, it's pretty scary, quite frankly. I mean, it, uh, I was, I didn't sleep the night before. Uh, I, was, I was feeling, like, sick, and my stomach was bugging me, and I'm staring at the wall. And then um, Maggie showed up, and Michelle showed up, and Scott showed up, and Scott said to me the day before, he's like, hey, you want me to bring the camera? And I'm like, ooh, okay. <laughs> Just, you know, if there's some, you know, opportunity to film something, right. you know, right, right. yeah, let's see what, you know, God might want to film, sure. <laughs> so those, those four you guys gathered, I, I think you did a little bit of... A teaching and some prayer, and then right out of the gate, as you're coming out of the building, uh, God kind of said, I'm glad you're scared, but I got this. Could you tell us that story? Yeah, we were planning to do ministry downtown Sunnyvale, <laughs> and we walked outside the door of this church, and this guy rides by on a bike, and he stops, and he says, hey, you know, is there a place where I can just hang out? And I'm like, well, you know, we're locking the church up. We're going to head downtown. Uh, you know, what do you need? How can I help you? And, and uh, he's like, uh, well, I just, you know, wanted a place to hang out. And I, I said, well, you know, do you need prayer for anything? He's like, oh, uh, well, you know, my back's kind of hurting. And I said, well, uh, I'll pray for your back. Do you care if we film it? <laughs> <laughs> Seems logical. Yeah. Man. And he's like, sure. So he signed the waiver. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, there's a release, you know, to, you know, to film. So, uh, and I uh, start praying for his back. And as I was really interesting, because while I was praying, I was, I was, I was just, I just got this sense that I'm not supposed to be praying for his back. 
So I finished praying for his back, and I, and I said, so you feel any different? He's like, no, <laughs> I don't feel nothing. I'm like, well, you know, uh, that's okay. But all of a sudden, he starts confessing. He just starts confessing. And, we're like, and he shares with us that he had been stealing a lot lately. He says, you know, I stole these shoes, and I stole that bike. And I remember when he rode up on the bike, I looked at the bike, I was like, that's a sweet bike. It's like, it's showroom bike, right? It's a, that's a nice bike. And then he says to me, he says, will you take this bike from me? Will you take it back? I go, yeah. And now I'm like shocked. I would go, this guy is now confessing that he's stealing and he's given the bike back after I pray for his back. And, uh, and he says, will you, will you return it to Walmart in Mountain View? That's where I stole it. So we were like, yeah. And I go, you know what? I'm not sure if I was actually, I tell him now. I said, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be praying for your back. I think I'm supposed to be praying for your heart. So can I pray for you? So we start, I start praying for him, and he ends up inviting the Lord into his heart. Mm. And, uh, and I, I actually uh, ended up that morning stealing Bibles from in here because <laughs> I want, just didn't, you know. Might, we'll pray for you. Yeah. <laughs> Right? I figured I'm an intern, you'd forgive me. So uh, I had three Bibles on me, and I, after we were done praying and stuff, I said, you know, um, why don't you, you know, here's a Bible. He's like, oh, good. I was just going to go, I was just going to go read or something anyways. You know, I go, well, you know, you know, there's a coffee shop across the street. Uh, go ahead and, you know, maybe just start reading the Bible. I said, maybe start in the book of John. And he opens up the Bible without flipping right to the book of John. I go, yeah, start there. And I was kind of laughing. I, in fact, I, I remember in the, in the video, I look back at Scott because I'm just so amazed, like, all this stuff is happening. I keep looking back. I'm like, really? I'm like, and then I have a conversation. Really, Scott? And like, Scott's like, Scott's what, are you filming this. Like, what? You know, so, uh, so it was just a neat experience. And then um, we headed downtown, and Michelle and Maggie were already there. And they happened to be standing outside or right in front of the big Christmas tree that was on Murphy Avenue. And they thought, I mean, it, what? Great prop. Yeah, it was a great prop. And the reason it was a great prop is what they told me afterwards is like people were coming up to them and asking them to take pictures in front of the tree. And then these two awesome ladies used it as an opportunity to pray for them. Because they're like, yes, I'll take your picture. Do you need prayer? <laughs> And Scott and I walk by, and there's like a group, there's a whole family that you ran into that you were praying for. So that was, it, was just, it was just an amazing morning, and we're going to do it again. Amen. Yeah, yeah. February, um, February 21st, we're heading back out. Uh, we're going to meet here at 8 in the morning and see what the Lord might have for us this time. And we're going to try to get into a rhythm, because I, it's my belief that the more we get into rhythm the more we actually start doing it every day. Now I'm, like, I'm trying to get myself into the habit of like, all right, Lord, what do you have for me right now? Like I want my testimony to be yesterday and today. Like I have one from 15 years ago, but I want my testimony to be God is on the move right now. Right, and here's, here's, some, here's some ways. Right. So uh, I think we, we, we're gonna, we don't have the video for today because um, I, I want you to hear from someone else, but... But we do have that, and we will show that at some other time. God did some incredible things afterwards, just returning it to Walmart and, yeah. and the coffee shop, everything like that. But I want to give you one last opportunity. February 21st, mm -hmm. do you want anyone else to join you? Yeah, I triple dog dare everyone in this room. <laughs> no, really. I mean, it's like, what? I don't know, like... I mean, I, I love, I mean, I, I love the stories of the international stuff that we're doing. That's amazing. And yes, let's continue to do that. But we also have an opportunity to go on the mission field, like right outside the front door and right down the, right down the road and in your neighborhood. And let's just get ourselves as a culture church, like to just build this into something that we just do. So let's just start doing that more and more. And, and let's go and do what Jesus asked us to do. And let's go make disciples. Amen. Amen. And just in case you're wondering, the Holy Spirit does use triple dog dares. Yeah. So just... oh. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Right. Give him a hand. Yep. And then uh, one last uh, uh, story I like to hear. Nicole, if you'll come join us. Um, I asked Nicole to share a story uh, because she she's on the, I guess, the other end, you could say, of someone who really... Um, took to heart being a local missionary. 
And so I'll probably I'd, we'll just start we'll just start there. Okay. I appreciate you again. Again. Uh, saying yes to me, even though I know it's nerve wracking. They they really aren't that. Already yes, oh, okay. a little a little better. Um, why don't you just tell us how you ended up uh, here? Here at Trinity. Um, well, let's see. About let's say two years ago, I had some. You know, troubles and challenges in my life, specifically with my job, um, something that I really valued. And um, I, at that point in time, God came into my life and um, touched me and was there for me and helped me through all that, that challenge and pain. And with that, um, I was searching for a, a church, a home. I, I was raised Catholic, had a great foundation, um, understood God, um, but did not have that relationship um, that I was, I think, searching for. Um, and so uh, I, I have some wonderful neighbors, um, Oscar and Kim Castro. I'm sure everyone knows them. Um, they uh, live a few doors down, and Kim and I were talking um, about late last summer about God, and we were together at a, a barbecue, and she's like, you need to come to the church, and I'm like, okay, I'm there, and I, I saw Avery, I think I went online, and I was like, I can do this, um, <laughs> and so um, I'm here now um, through their relationship and support, and a few others as well. Um, I've met some really amazing people. Awesome. Yep. So again, I just want to highlight this, this was, uh, you know in the castles for, I think you said the first service, about eight years. Yes. Right. Yep. Yep. And but it, there came a point in in her life where God really kind of began to kind of speak to her and maybe open her heart up a little bit more, and then along uh, comes uh, Kim, who's who's just you know anything about the Castros, living a life full of grace, yeah. seasoned with salt, and it's an opportunity, um, and it was God's timing, right? I'm I'm assuming knowing the Castros that they weren't. Julie oh, no. about going to church all the time. I always, and, Kim has a little fish on her um, car, and I was like, hmm, I gotta talk to her. Once, you know, I had this stronger relationship with the Lord, I was like, hmm. And so we had that, right. that one interaction. And then since, God, so God mm-hmm. used them to, uh, to bring you to this body, and it really isn't about this body and this place, but it's about Him. What has He been doing, God been doing in your mm-hmm. heart and life during this season? Um, I think it started back kind of with my job situation. I letting go, I think, and uh, surrendering. Um, I, I thought when you become a, a Christian or a believer, it just happens magically. You know, everything you can let go, and it, it doesn't work that way. It's piece by piece by piece. Um, and so right now, you know, I'm I'm here with my son and. Um, Wanting, you know, my husband to be here with me and just letting that go and let, leaving it to God is where I'm at today. So. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Um, there's some folks, oh, everyone's <laughs> listening. And, and I, you know, I know you have good days, bad days like everybody else, but mm-hmm. there is a renewed light about you, which, I, which is one of the reasons I'm, I invited you. <laughs> and I don't want to put too much pressure on you. Um, but I do see it. But but they may be some folks out there are, are they're just a little weary about talking to their neighbors about about faith and God. And is there any kind of a, a, advice or suggestion or anything you kind of like to speak into in, in regards to that? Wait, say that again. <laughs> Boy, me repeating the same question yeah. twice. No, I put him on the spot. <laughs> Basically, uh, mm-hmm. for those who may be nervous about speaking to somebody, mm-hmm. a, a neighbor or a coworker about God, ha- having been on the other end, when, when Ken did, I mean, talking about God at a barbecue, that's, it almost feels like a no-no. And yeah. so what, how would you encourage them or, or to either how to approach that person or what to look for or any, anything in that regard? I just think showing kind of is, is really important, right? Um, you can't, you know, throw the Bible on the table and say, read this, you know, just showing and having just a casual conversation or telling your testimony. So I think it's important. That Amen. helps. Amen. And that's, again, back to living that life of grace, season with salt. And, and for those of you who are around, you know, when we talk about our mission, that, that we give Jesus, but we talk about, right, we learn about folks. You don't just go like a bull in a china shop. Mm-hmm. And then you serve them. You care for them, genuinely care for them. 
And then as the Holy Spirit gives opportunity, you share with them. Sometimes that's in the first conversation, though very, very rarely. Sometimes it's in the, you know, six months later, a year later, or when something happens six years later. Mm -hmm. But but your the point is is that you're faithful to what God calls you to. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 And here's the here's the cool thing about this story. Uh, the casters are at the at the first service and. So they still get their full blessing because they didn't brag. They didn't tell anybody. We told their story. Yes. So as an, as an, as an illustration of, of, of God's goodness. But now everything that, that God does in Nicole's life, the fruit of her life, hmm. right? And it, no pressure on her because then I put pressure on myself as the pastor. So we're not going to go there. <laughs> Just but what the good stuff, the fruit of that, they, that's a part of their spiritual inheritance. Hmm. And everybody now who is affected by Nicole's light, now that's her spiritual inheritance and the Castro's spiritual inheritance. Mm -hmm. Not to mention the spiritual inheritance of those who poured into their lives. Mm -hmm. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. So you don't, you, you may just be, you, all you may get is a knot somewhere. And you don't understand mm -hmm. how that knot is connected to a whole series of things that comes out to a beautiful portrait that adds to God's kingdom. Just be faithful with the little God's given. Amen? Amen? All right, let's pray for Nicole. Okay, you sit next to me. <laughs> yes, I'm going to come sit next to you. <laughs> Father, I just pray for my sister in Christ. It has just been a privilege for me to get to know her, to see you grow in her. I, I know she's in process, dear God. I know she feels very young in the faith, uh, and she is. But that doesn't matter to you, God. All you care about is that she takes the little steps of faith that you're calling to to where she's at now. Continue to bless her. And continue, dear Father, to work in her life that she may be a living billboard of Jesus in her own life. Not of perfection, but of one living in your grace, in your love, and who's sharing that grace and love with others. Continue to strengthen her, dear God, especially in those moments when she is weak, especially in those moments, dear God, when she doesn't have a strength. May she know you always will make up the difference, especially in those bad days. And there's nothing that she can do to change your love for her. Continue to grow her. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You're welcome.